Welcome to our Boho Frequency podcast. We're doing things a little differently today. As always, we like to switch things up. We have this beautiful community through our app, through mm-hmm. Boho Beautiful Official. Yeah. And you guys are here with us right now, which is so special. Yes. And we thought this was a better, a more effective way of getting closer with the community. Yeah, exactly. We used to do this when we had a Patreon. A while ago, we would have like Patreon exclusive kind of, remember? Oh, yeah. We do it in our van. We do it in our van. All the time. Yeah. All over America, remember? Yeah. And now we're like, well, we should do something for the community as well because this is amazing. Like what you guys, like having you guys on this platform has been a true blessing in our lives. And it's great because we can get to know you a little bit more as you have the opportunity to, to ask us questions and just hang out and chat today as we explore many different topics and ideas that have been on our minds lately it's amazing it's also gonna we're gonna post on youtube after Mm -hmm. but um we'll probably keep doing it this way i think because i I don't know we really appreciate those who support us on the app it means so much to us Mm -hmm. we put a lot of our heart and soul into it um but we also feel there's always this separation Mm -hmm. and until we design our new app or a new community base where things can integrate a little more We figure this might be a a way to, I don't know, to touch base. Yeah, exactly. And what's also exciting is that, I think, was it a couple of weeks ago, we asked you guys what kind of classes you wanted, because now we're kind of getting ready to do a big production. The next two months is going to be a huge production time for us. And you guys came back with so many amazing ideas. So thank you. Yeah, we put it on the the month update. Mm -hmm. And then you guys put so much energy. Mm -hmm. So now we have, like... A compass. A list. Yeah, we have a huge list of new classes we're going to shoot and challenges and workouts. And Mark's going to be doing classes, which is exciting to get in front of the camera. Hey. And you behind the camera. And me behind the camera. <laughs> we also have someone coming in to help us as well. So we're expanding our team a little bit. Um, speaking of expanding our team. Yeah, a little housekeeping, I guess, before we mm-hmm. jump into the, the podcast. Yeah. Um, we've had a few inquiries about, you know, the job posting that we did and if positions have been filled or not. A, a few. We First of all, we had a, a massive response and we want to thank everyone yeah. who applied. There was like five or six job positions and it was so cool to see so many people recording your videos. We watched so many videos of people like just talking to us and yeah. it really brings... The human aspect to it all. Right. right. So it's not just like, oh, resume or someone's email. It's like, wow. Like, they were, took the time to record a video yeah. for us or edit a video for it's us. It's just so sweet. So yeah. it's been a long process, but mm-hmm. we should be wrapping it up soon. If you want to still apply and this is your first hearing about it, you're more than welcome to. Mm-hmm. Um, so but go check out yeah. the job posting at www.bowbeautiful.life. But um, hopefully the two of us will have made our way through it all. Yes. Because it's been like... It took over a week. It did. And a lot of calls with different people. But it was really nice just to get to know a few, you know, many different personalities and different people out there and see how we can include and build our team up. Because I think that's what we're feeling these days, you know, and with, with Xavian and everything going on, expansion is is a huge part of our life right now and bringing in more good people on our team that can help us grow in many different directions. Because I think like, Outside of the app, we have so many new projects that we want to bring to life this year in 2021. Yeah, we put a lot of it on hold for COVID. Yeah. And because we just wanted to create a lot of content during COVID. And then we knew Xavier was coming, so we knew we had to create a lot of content, which is crazy. The one last video today we Mm -hmm. posted on YouTube is the last video we shot in June. Was that in June or July? June, July. Yeah. Some in the summer. Um, that's how long it lasted us, which we'll get to maybe in a bit when we're talking about the topic for today, but that's, it's amazing. And it was such a, I got emotional this morning when we were posting it because mm-hmm. there's just this flood of memories of being with Prince and traveling around Canada in, and our, no, van. in our van <laughs> and knowing Xavier was on the way and camping yeah. all over the place and just being out with the goal of shooting as much content as possible. You were in like month three and four. In my pregnancy, yeah. And you were shooting like 29 videos a day or something. It was insane. Not 29. I know. It was like eight, sometimes eight videos a day or so. But it was the last one. Mm-hmm. It was so special. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah. I don't know. So, let's talk about beginning again. Mm-hmm. But, so, we thought that today for the podcast, we would go with the topic um, of beginning again. Because every month on the app, we choose a different topic and we build a 
beautiful calendar mm-hmm. to support the concept. And so we thought if we talked about it um, a little bit more in an expanded long form, we could also engage with you guys um, on here with some questions yeah. as we go. So Mark's got a laptop on his lap, a laptop on the your The worst lap. place yeah. to keep a laptop. <laughs> but he's going to uh, read all the questions. So as we're continuing, you guys feel free to just write your heart out, you know, let us know what your thoughts are, if you have any questions at all. Um, But yeah, I think beginning again was a theme that was really close to our heart for this month, because I know personally, I've been really going through a lot of that recovery and beginning again in my personal journey. Um, But we also thought it suited not just, you know, post-pregnancy type of ideas, but I think everyone in their life goes through a moment where they have to restart or multiple moments. or multiple moments yes. I, I mean yeah. from i think it was close for me because of the injuries i've gone through yeah and for you you went through injuries well an injury that wasn't like a, a a negative it was an injury because i created life and birthed life into this world and no. my body went through a lot <laughs> Hold on. i'm not saying that that was an injury i was referring to your back injuries. oh okay no that's oh my yeah. god <laughs> that's you that too <laughs> um but no but i'm meaning that like and outside of that it's not also injuries or giving birth and having to come back it said through the life journey through all our life journeys life gets in the way Exactly. And sometimes it's not even physical. You know, there's, I'm sure people in their life have gone through moments when, you know, mental health is a big component. If you lost somebody or, you know, divorce, a breakup has caused you to, what's the right word, just stop with the progress that you've been doing. And it's almost created like an injury in your heart, in your mm-hmm. mind that, uh, that forced you to stop and then now you're having to begin again in your journey or you just fall away because that's part of part of the health and wellness journey is constantly having to get back up like constantly going through a process of trying to build a ritual trying to build a practice trying to be healthier and then losing focus on that i mean we live in a distraction age and it's it's perfectly normal and perfectly okay when you fall away from that which makes you feel greatest but takes the most effort um, and it's a concept actually I've been thinking a lot about, and it's come up in a few conversations this week, which is in life with the, there's two roads with trying to embedder yourself. It's not easy and it's not comfortable. And in fact, it could be paralleled with suffering. Yeah. And so in the sense of like, when you're trying to become better, it takes incredible energy to implement new habits. And that's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But the result is a happier, healthier, more vibrant life. And then on the other hand, if you choose not to, it's just uncomfortable because you get more out of shape and your your body-mind balance gets more knocked out out of place. And so constantly with the way that the world works and what you get dragged into when you're not focused on embettering yourself, you'd seem to decline. Mm -hmm. And life is about decline. I mean, eventually we all decline. And so it's interesting. It's two choices. But at the end of the day, they're both uncomfortable, but one has such a positive impact and result on your mental and physical mm-hmm. well-being. No, exactly. And I also feel like when situations are presented to us in our life that force us to begin to begin again, it is really allows you to think about the journey of life in general, right? Like I think that's part of the journey is having to find the strength to mm-hmm. get back up, is falling and getting back up again. It's like, look at a child. When a child learns how to walk, they fall and fall and fall. They don't give up. They don't just be like, you know what? I'm not going to ever walk again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to crawl. Like, they keep going. And I think that mentality um, stays in our heart. And but, it, so, but is lost in practice but it for, is to so many, so people. many people. No, it's true. Um, but I think those opportunities are brought forward to us when we feel like we've lost touch with ourselves or when, you know, an injury or a heartbreak, anything that's happened that took us out of our practice and maybe we've gained weight or we lost our strength. All of these things are just circumstances that are brought forward by the universe for us to, one, find awareness that we're unhappy. And with that awareness, find the discipline and a routine to get yourself back on track. So beginning again, I think, is inevitable for everybody like it constantly you know all of us are going to have a moment to have to begin again at and some point it, in and our I life. Think forgiveness plays such a massive role mm-hmm. in in the process of beginning again because i think a lot of us when if it's not due to something uncontrollable if it was because you just fell away from mm-hmm. a routine that you would wanted so badly to to commit to but forgiving yourself for falling away that's part of the journey 
Like failure is the part of all success and all journeys. You meet resistance along the way and you get pushed off course and it's the strength that it takes to pull back. And that becomes the ultimate test is, okay, well, I did yoga for 30 days and then literally my life took over and I got a new job and this happened and this happened and I haven't stretched in 14 and then 15 and then 16. But at some point finding that moment to be like, that's okay mm -hmm. because you can always come back. Yeah. And that's, I think that's really important because, you know, as, as, there's a lot of self pitying being like, well, I just can't, or I just don't have time. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't have 10 minutes or 15 minutes that you can put in, like that you can figure out a way to meticulously put into yourself, then what kind of life are you leading? Mm -hmm. We have like, there has to be that. I mean, if, if it's your kids get up at five, you have to get up at 445. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if your job is just taking over your life, well, well, you have, you know, cut 15 minutes out of your lunch mm -hmm. and it, it, but sacrifice is part of that. And then forgiveness when you forget to do it. So maybe, I mean, there's lots of different aspects to it. Yeah. And, and making a commitment to yourself and creating a routine, I think is a really important thing. I mean, right now, even looking at everything that we've been going through with our, with Xavier and our life and myself personally, you know, having to get my strength back after giving birth and especially knowing that we're going to be shooting a lot of videos in the next few weeks in my in the back of my head I'm like wow I've really got to get my strength going and there's a lot of motivation to just get back to oh my god where I was before and one of the things that I find has been really helping me so far is a structure and a routine and a schedule and I, I feel really blessed that you know both our mothers are here right now helping us yeah but just like having my mom come and take Xavier for, you know, two to three hours, you know, while he naps and play with him to give me that time. Like if you guys, I know I've had a lot of questions coming to me, like, what are you doing right now? To oh, but that's like the number one question going on. In yeah. This. I've been trying to really combine a lot of different uh, methods to help my strength. So I've been trying to run a lot. I go running on the beach here. I try to do that at least four to five times a week, uh, which is incredible to see too, because each time I go there, that run gets a little bit easier and a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, Remember the first one? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that speaks to beginning again because the first time I ran, I was, well, I couldn't even run. I ran for like five minutes and then I remember I came back and I was like my, my whole like uterus hurt like from running it was really interesting sensation to feel and again listening, listening to, your body to your body is so crucial because a lot of people be like no i'm just gonna push through the pain it's like no that's that's not a way to get back on track because it's not about like gaining strength in a week it's understanding that getting yourself back and starting again takes time and and, 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 and patience and compassion yeah. for your body because it's mm -hmm. not easy it's never easy no it's never easy and so for me and doing my runs and each day it gets a little bit easier and I go for about 15, 20 minutes. And then I've been trying to incorporate a lot of different strength training. So, you know, I started using dumbbells and doing a lot of more bar inspired kind of Pilates fused workouts has been my go-to because I find those type of workouts are easier on the joints, especially for, you know, post postpartum because our joints and, and body has gone through such a massive change that everything's slowly shifting back into place and that you want to be kind to your joints and to your body while still at the same time finding ways to, to strengthen and challenge the mm -hmm. body right so yeah like bar style of pilates workouts have been my strength training and of course yoga practice as well i mean that's always part of my life but it's like fusing these three components so far for me has been something that's helped me a lot get to where i'm going and i'm still on a journey but you're doing mm -hmm. incredible thanks and no but i'm watching your per, it's not persistence because that sounds like it's against a resistance that's not natural or that's mm -hmm. meant to stop you but your dedication to the journey and that i think that's it's really inspiring and i think that 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 your journey and surrender to it, I think that that can help a lot of people because we've seen a lot of emails and a lot of comments come in from people that have given birth recently. Yeah. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. And and people are clearly having a hard time with that. And we get a lot of emails about people that are coming back from an injury and they're just like, I just can't get back. But your our bodies take time mm -hmm. and it takes care and understanding and a commitment to that. And eventually... Yeah. You get where you're looking to go. No, exactly. And also understanding that you are on your own personal journey. I think that's really important, especially I find, you know, with women and the postpartum, because there is this idea in our society like, oh, you know, 
even for me, I was like, oh, I should be able to just get back up where I was. And almost like there's this pressure to have to be like snapping yourself back to the body you were, you know, nine months ago. And I think we need to recognize that every single person goes mm -hmm. through that experience in their own unique way. And for some people, it's really easy to jump, to get back to where they were. And for some people, it's a little bit harder. And it's, there's so many factors that play into that. And so I think the, one of the most important things is also to not compare your progress to someone else's progress because your body is unique in its own beautiful way and it adjusts to exercise and diet and all of these things in its own time. And so the way my body responds might be different to someone else's body, you know? And I think that's important because I caught myself too a lot of times, like, you know, you look at social media and like you, you see like all these models like give birth and then they're doing photo shoots a week later and you're like, wow, like how do these people bounce back so fast? And I think it's important um, to recognize that everybody's journey is different. Right. And comparison is one of the worst things we can do in that time same with not just that time i think in life compare that's the yeah. de the death of social media for all of us is through comparison yeah that's like that's why we gave up our phones basically social media on our phones mm -hmm. is that that sickening thing scrolling. that you can't even control while you're scrolling yeah. because you're just everything's a mirror mm -hmm. and so after giving birth the, the only thing that you should be looking at isn't mirrors but your baby Mm -hmm. right like, and yourself and yourself yeah. and and realizing like that you have to do what you have to do and mm -hmm. and i mean it's interesting because you've done incredibly well like people around town are like you had a baby <laughs> like you, but i think but part of that i think is your commitment to this daily practice mm -hmm. and easing yourself into it and now it's become a da daily practice since but i also think like leading up to xavian mm -hmm. you were incredibly vigilant in a, in like a, a such a beautiful holistic way. Why don't like why don't you talk a little bit about that? My routine before I had Xavier, which I think was huge help in my recovery. And like I said before, it's like preparing for a marathon was you know a clean diet. I don't say clean diet because sometimes people feel like oh well I have to restrict myself of certain foods. Like no, just a healthy diet filled with different nutrients and minerals and you know because i think as soon as you conceive and you're growing a human being in your life you are eating not in the way they say you eat for two or you can eat double your portions but it's more of a way like you're eating and, and giving the nutrients to your baby at the same time so being very mindful of what are you actually putting into your body and is it nourishing you because i do remember like you know there's like this cliche thing in society it's like oh you're pregnant you're eating pickles and ice cream tubs of ice cream every day um which is, if that's what you do, that's cool. But I mean, that brings no benefit to you or your baby at all, except satisfies a craving. And I find that there were so many different ways that you can satisfy a craving if it's uncontrollable for you. Like I remember for me, if I ever craved, and I, to this day, if I really want like ice cream or any kind of sweet like yeah, that. Yeah, craving's not just for when you're pregnant. No, exactly. It happens to all of us. But like, for example, ice cream, you can take frozen bananas and blend them put a little cacao into it and you just made a healthy variation of chocolate ice cream that is healthy for your body you know it's all about being coming aware of the craving the craving's unconscious mm -hmm. the next step is an awareness all of a sudden you realize you're about to do something because of a craving you're in some automation mode and you're coming into consciousness and then using your self-awareness to judge what the outcome of the action you're about to do is and if there's a better more beneficial outcome mm -hmm. so it's like the path to self-awareness exactly. and i think it's important that yeah. that that's something in all aspects uh, uh, this morning my alarm goes off 5 a.m mm -hmm. my automation was to lie there and my consciousness came in my awareness was like why are you lying here mm -hmm. and then the self would well, actually first it was you're just lying here you're missing your setting up for this live stream and doing it going for your run and doing your morning practice mm -hmm. and then the self-awareness was like well maybe there's a better choice but i think it's interesting because when you were pregnant the most incredible thing was you you need a motivation i think for self-awareness like for, yeah. to to implement like it's a goal and i think you understood something that is so important when you're meeting that cravings have a more powerful justification and your more powerful justification is everything i put in my body is feeding my baby no exactly and, and it's like well what i if I had the choice to put junk food or something more healthier with nutrients and vitamins, you know, that awareness right there, it's like, well, which one would you choose? Which one would you want your baby to consume right now? Right? Especially with 
Exactly. Like, like the brain and everything is developing. So it's like being mindful of the food that you put into your body is important. And but that doesn't even include when you're pregnant. I think that it includes for everybody, you know, like what benefit is this meal providing you if it doesn't have any sort of nutrient conscious eating you know ingredients into using it. Yeah. the self-awareness yeah. instead of grabbing the thing that your habit loop mm-hmm. your, your basal ganglia is telling you from your brain it, that you want to eat and making the active decision to decide what is best for me to eat exactly and what will i be happier in the yeah. long run for yeah. for me it was ketchup chips right giving up ketchup <laughs> chips was insane right like think yeah. about that like it's literally like hardwired into me from eating so many as a as a teenage child. boy and yeah. a child like mm-hmm. i grew up on those things and so to lose that like yeah. it was harder to give up ketchup chips and it was like because i smoked before or even like coke i remember even when we started dating remember you would like still drink like coke zero only zero though i always justified <laughs> it with terrible. that right it's terrible but, but you but you make these justifications yeah. to not have to go the full way mm-hmm. it's really interesting yeah no it is so going back to my training for my marathon of creating life (laughs) was you know definitely just being mindful and eating with awareness and eating a lot it's like I ate a lot but it was always mindful eating and conscious eating like you're saying like making sure that the food I was putting into my body was nourishing me and my baby at the same time and then you know just using different products um for you know for your skin being stretched out like I use different creams and oils I put that on my belly like every night uh, there is a beautiful brand I, I really liked called Eden. And um, they have these like stretch mark specific like oils and it's all natural and, and you know, healthy for you. Um, but I, you know, I put that every night and I think it worked because I don't have stretch marks on my belly, which is nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know? but you prepared like it was mm-hmm. like you said, getting ready to run a marathon. But rather than preparing for a marathon, you saw the things that might be coming at you later and mm-hmm. did your best to preempt that exactly. a really great question here is and i'm going to start interrupt interrupting us with That's some great. questions yeah. um from fiore nogi noji i meet so many people who don't understand how you can eat a plant-based while pregnant juliana mm-hmm. y- you did eat a plant-based during all your pregnancy oh, yeah. and you were fine right a hundred percent like i mean i ate everything i eat now as long as you're eating a well versed diet filled with legumes like so you're meeting the criteria of your proteins your carbohydrates your vegetables your fruits i mean really and and supplementing too i mean supplementing was a big thing i took you know a full prenatal vitamin which had all of the supplements uh, that you need to grow the baby but also you know i took the dha like the omega-3 for the brain for, for, the he, brain, for his brain for his and yours brain. exactly um I took immune system boosting um, supplements as well, like vitamin C's because... A lot of D because of COVID. A lot of D, yeah. And then also including things in my smoothies like um, biotin and silica, little drops Mm -hmm. for for your skin, collagen. Like there is a a wonderful vegan collagen. Actually, Sun Warrior, who uh, is sponsored our podcast all the time this uh, is our sun warrior <laughs> plug uh they have a really cool uh product we've been using it's like collagen right um mix into your smoothie it's like a powder it's amazing when a sponsor that sponsors your thing you actually we've been using them for since before you were pregnant yeah. like religiously yeah, yeah um and both the protein now the the warrior protein and this is the protein classic mm-hmm. for working out and That's for great. and for b- gaining strength and it the thing about not to get too sponsory on this, but the thing about what's so great about what they do is they're very, very active and not just, it's not just a protein. So like, for instance, like there's a whole amino acid profile. It looks like there's about 15 to 20 amino acids that are, mm-hmm. that are put into this, which give you so much amazing support. Then there's the regular, you know, the proteins and things like that. Not in this one as much, but I think in the warrior, it's got like MCT oils and maybe it has mushrooms too. Yeah. And, and, then, and then the collagen mix that I really like, cause it's just really good for your skin. Um, and it's vegan. Too, and there's so. a link. We'll put it in at the end of this, but we also put it out in the official newsletter with a special um, opportunity. Oh no, it was just the link. It was just the link we put in, in there because they're having a sale. I think today's their last sale. So mm-hmm. if you see this and you feel like trying to implement some protein powders, <laughs> proteins or supplements or omegas or anything like that, they're having a sale this week. And then you can apply when you use our link, the boho code, it's just it's boho. Like 10% extra. Yeah. It's 10 on top of what is yeah. they're, they're doing like a 20% off sale and then you get 10% off the total of that. Yeah. 
But that's our sun warrior thing. But I mean, sun warrior is a huge part of her life. Yeah. And so and that was actually what I used a lot in my smoothies and I still do. Um, but yeah, I mean, adding lots of different supplementation and just eating a very healthy diet allowed me to have a very healthy pregnancy. And, you know, and I went and had all my tests and, you know, they te check your blood and oh make sure I'm not deficient in anything. And I was always great. Like I was, I was actually intrigued to know, I'm like, will I be deficient in certain, you know, B12s or something because I'm vegan and I wasn't, I had actually a very high amount of B12, maybe because I eat a lot of nutritional yeast. Yeah. Nutritional so, yeast is key for that. For yeah. Sure. It's, a, it's a supplementation of B12. It's the one thing that you don't get as a vegan. Um, but B12 with the soil degradation degradation mm -hmm. um, is already supplemented to meat it, because they're not anyways. actually getting the B12 from the yeah. grass they graze. And f so it's supplemented in their feed. So you're either taking your supplement when you're eating meat through the supplementation of the food the that animal. the animals are eating, yeah. or you're getting your supplementation from B12 and Directly. not having to, you know, basically, I don't know, contribute to one of the worst human atrocities that we do which is just billions of animals a day yeah so for me i think that was a huge piece and i honestly i had a very healthy pregnancy and a very healthy birth and it was amazing a healthy baby <laughs> and so yeah. vegan pregnancy vegan life vegan everything it works plant-based like as, you as just long have... as you're eating right i think that's the most important thing like as you see some of these stories of someone's like oh you know i tried to be vegan but i just couldn't survive on vegetables so I, you know it's like well obviously you can't just eat vegetables like you have to have a balance mm -hmm. no matter what diet you follow you have to have vegetables and fruits and legumes and and grains and all of these things it's all about balance and it's all about um creating a nice variety of food so you yeah. don't get sick of eating one thing all the time obviously that's difficult and being know? being open to challenging yourself with new things that's really mm -hmm. what it comes down to yeah um gonna just fire through i'm backdating some questions that go back a little bit um this i and i'll i, I like this sarah blue asked you already know what xavian is going to eat and he's gonna eat a, a balanced diet yeah i mean he's a vegan baby and he's living on breast milk right now <laughs> yeah which is vegan because i'm obviously continuing my vegan diet so and i think i think this is really this is a we could take billy dms what is your daily routine like, when do you go to sleep if you wake up at 5 a.m.? I think this is a really cool question because I think it plays into beginning again because structure is such a massive piece for us. Mm -hmm. And I think for anyone that wants to begin again is to... Beginning again means you need to implement a new strategy in your life to get to a place you want to go. Well, exactly. That's kind of what I was saying with even like having, you know, my mom helping for like that three hours is when I can find that time in the morning for myself. I don't get three hours. I usually get about an hour that I can go and actually run and do my workout. But having that structure, knowing that between the hours of nine and 11, at some point, I'm going to get that hour and mm -hmm. you just structure that into your day. And that's really, really important because routine, you know, you know, you're not just like wandering around like, okay, when can I fit this in? It's like, no, no, you just, you, you make a commitment to yourself to do what you have to do to upkeep your body and to help yourself begin again. And that's, and that comes in the in, in the shape of making commitments to some, kind of routine mm -hmm. um, morning routines to us have always been the secret to everything we've ever done um yeah. and and right now our morning routine isn't together for the first time ever no, you have more of a morning routine than i do because the xavian always eats in the mornings and then he wants to play and so until my mom or or your mom we have that help come in my mornings have been with the baby well sometimes Sometimes he'll sleep or sometimes I'll come take him yeah. and then you get on your mat on our porch. Not right. a, not, not right. the full deal, but you get that morning half hour, which yeah. is really nice. Yeah, yeah. But I realized because of the co-sleeping, um, mm -hmm. if I get up at five, it's two hours at least usually even before Xavier or uh, Juliana are waking up. Mm -hmm. And that's allowed me, um, because I'm on a tear lately, to really dig into making sure I'm the most productive, supportive person I've ever been for the people around me and for the business. And so giving myself, if I'm up before five every day, that allows me to be able to, and I have a list of like eight or nine things. And I look at that list in the morning and it includes my yoga practice, includes a run, it, it includes Wim Hof breathing. It includes starting with a glass, a full like half liter of water, um, a probiotic, um, reading. I try to fit 10 minutes or 15 minutes of reading um, and then meditation. 
And so mm-hmm. I have this little list and it's like some days I get it all and some days I don't, but I forgive myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I basically go like crazy from the minute I get up until the minute you guys get up mm-hmm. and then the day begins. Yeah. But it's like a priming. And, and if you guys get up at six, I would start getting up at four because I need that to be able to deliver what I know we need. Yeah. And so to be able to prime myself for the day in that, in that way. And during my meditation, I'll sit and I'll just, I'll do like five minutes of just gratitude just to really remember, like, no matter how hard that is and the sun's not even up and the mosquitoes are out now. Mosquitoes have been terrible. But if we can be grateful for what is to come then it makes the more difficult parts that much more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And gratitude is such a big component of a morning practice too because it allows you to really set your mind in a positive way. Like no matter what you have ahead of you that day, starting your day with just simple affirmations has been so life-changing for us. And they can be simple, right? I mean, we can be grateful for the little things, like grateful for your delicious coffee that you can have or grateful for the hour that you can spend on your mat, grateful for your family, your friends, like all these things, just repeating them for 10 minutes a day. I mean, I'm so glad to hear you do that. I didn't know you did that. That's awesome. You Um, guys are sleeping. You have no idea what's going on downstairs. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my gratitude half asleep with Xavier on my boots. And that's something to be grateful for, too. <laughs> yes, exactly. That I have a healthy baby that mm-hmm. I'm able to nourish and feed. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. So I think that's a really important and a powerful tool. I hope I could we could share with people out there. And but, I think that's really helped our life. And setting that structure when you're mm-hmm. beginning again from anything. Like, yeah. even, like, it can be, I think it's important, like, heartbreak. Like, when we got to Costa Rica... I honestly don't think I was in as bad shape as we were, not just mentally and emotionally, but it translated completely physically. I was sick. You know, I was getting like weird fevers. I kept taking COVID tests. I didn't have COVID. I was like, what's going on? But we went through three months of like emotional terror because because of Prince. And we got here and I was just like, couldn't stretch. I couldn't do anything. I was at the basement I've ever been. And whenever I find myself at the basement, whether it was after my l5s1 herniation or after my acl uh, reconstructive surgery or whether it was after prince you've had to begin again many times it's it's so hard yeah and you just like but building that structure and setting a goal and this is what i think is really important and i know it's very controversial to a lot of people but there's so much knowledge from jordan peterson that can be taken and extracted from some of the things he does to help people get out of the basement And you set yourself up with that morning. You set yourself up with what the perfect day will look like. You set yourself up with how you want the whole week to go. And you work every day to do it. And even if you hit 50%, if you didn't set it up, if you didn't, if I didn't have that morning list every morning, I'd hit 10 if I'm lucky Mm -hmm. or none. I wouldn't even have the energy when we got here after Prince to want to do anything. And so finding that grounding and understanding that like, if you set it up, you can at least knock some of it down. I mean, mm. and even if it's, even if as a regular human, you know, you get 40 or 30% of the, your goal, that's that's not meeting the goal isn't the failure. It's not trying. So hitting 30% is such a success because it wouldn't be there if it wasn't for it. So structure and morning routines and setting up goals and and understanding that driving towards it and any energy invested is energy you wouldn't have invested another way. Mm -hmm. And even though it started, when I did my first run, I couldn't make it down the street and back. I had to walk back. Like I was in that rough shape. And then this morning I went running and I ran like probably four kilometers. But it's every day you go an extra 50 yards. Mm -hmm. So the first time I could make it to the beach, the next time I made it back from the beach, the next time I made it to the beach and out a little bit and then the next day i blew my hamstring out and i couldn't do anything and i had to stop for three days and start again but i forgave myself beginning again is all about forgiving yourself and just incrementally sticking to something and i think it's it's that self-love component right right? yeah because through self-love is that's when you can find forgiveness because this is a journey and you will fail i think that's also another thing we have to remember that it's not going to be easy Otherwise, everyone would just be at the very top of their game, right? But, but failing is but, part of winning. Exactly. It's part and, of and you learn success. so much about yourself when you fail. I think failure is so important in our journey, in our life in general, because it teaches you so much. It teaches you something about yourself, but also about you know what you were doing and how you can change 
A or B or C to succeed the next time. And that right there, that learning, that component is maybe the reason why you failed in the first place. You know, the universe has a plan for, for everything. Sure. Everything happens for a reason. I truly believe in that. And even in the most difficult failures or heartbreaks or, you know, when certain relationships end and you just don't understand like how and why it's like, you have to look beyond that and look to the higher power and be like, wow, well, you know what? It's because I'm being redirected somewhere else. Or it's because there's a different path for me. There's a different reason that I'm here right now. Right. And I think that's a really important thing to always remember because life will always make you begin again. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. always. And it's what you do with those beginnings that matters. Yeah, exactly. Um, a couple of people are asking about who Jordan Peterson is. Um, just look him up. He's got some, don't watch the controversial, like a lot of journalism, journalists really try to take him down on a few ideas that have been misconstrued in the media. Um, of course. The mm-hmm. self-help aspect of it, his book, 12 Rules for Life, his new one, Antidote for Chaos. They're brilliant, brilliant mm-hmm. things you can take things, the brilliant pieces of work that you can take particles from yeah. that you need at that point in your life. Um, he also got really good like YouTube clips. If you just put oh. Jordan Peterson on YouTube and find some motivational speeches, well, just, like yeah. really powerful things. It's sure. amazing yeah. Beca- because, yeah, even the most controversial people, for whatever reason, whether you believe it's controversial or not, mm-hmm. um, there's always stuff in it that if you can use your critical mind, you can extract for great benefit. No, exactly. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of people mentioning losing um, losing family members and yeah. going through hard times in the comments. Um, yeah. I mean, oh, that's a difficult one because I believe that's it's starting again in a more spiritual way, right? It's one thing to be injured. And mm-hmm. to have to have a physical limitation that you have to get over. But it's another thing when your heart is broken and when your spirit is broken and you have to find this deeper strength in your heart to get back up and keep moving forward in your life. And that's easier said than done, you know. And yeah. I believe for those moments, that's when beginning again on a spiritual practice is crucial. And even like we were talking about earlier, like those little affirmations of gratitude, like that can be part of your spiritual practice is finding moments to just, you know, disconnect yourself from the chaos of the world and sit in peace, put on some headphones, listen Mm -hmm. to some nature, some beautiful music that really connects deep to your heart and give yourself time to heal. I think giving yourself time is important. And that is your way of beginning again, you know, starting slow. And then you can incorporate more of the physical movement and aspect if that's what you need. Right. But just finding moments to to heal the injury in your heart is yeah. important as well. Because, I mean, man, that, that was, that's tough. Like, yeah, that's it's the hardest thing to heal from, you know. The physical, mm-hmm. the mental, the emotional, it's all a very, very delicate, always ongoing balance. Yeah. And with ups and downs and great tragedy and great suffering and great success, as long as you can figure out a way to understand that. I heard this idea that the, you, you can believe the diagnosis of how you're feeling or mm-hmm. from a doctor or from, you know, a broken part of your body or a broken heart, but you don't have to believe the prognosis mm-hmm. because in the end, it's all so controllable and it's, it's fucking hard. I'm not saying when Prince died, it was easy. Like I cried every day. You still cry. I don't think constantly, you, I don't think you ever really heal. Like life gives us moments where it breaks our heart and our heart heals, but there's these scars mm-hmm. in our heart and the scars will always be there. They're always, you know, you're never going to heal from losing a family member or a friend or, or like losing a relationship that will always be a memory, but you'll, you'll move forward. That's what you have to remember. You'll, you'll move forward. You'll move on. And one step Mm -hmm. is better than none. And starting with the first step being like, you know what, today I know I'm, I'm in grief and Mm -hmm. this has been difficult and someone in my family is sick or wherever you are, but today I'm going to get up and I'm going to think for five minutes about just things I'm grateful for outside Mm -hmm. of all that. I'll let the, all the emotion come back after, but I'm going to use my greatest strength to just begin at five minutes and maybe even meditate or maybe Mm. like go for a run because sometimes using the counter to what your suffering is like if you're injured like with my back meditation and visualization which was Mm. something i could do helped so much and with prince it was like when i wake up and just break down if i went for a run the physical 
the physiology of that run could help right. counter and reset and refresh the Almost like the I grief. also feel like a distraction in a way was necessary sometimes too. It's like, not to say you should sit and watch movies, but you know how sometimes you just lose yourself in like a movie and for that moment, moment you're not thinking about your grief or an issue mm -hmm. or a problem you're dealing with but you can use that same idea and losing yourself in maybe it's like putting on some music and just moving your body and dancing and just letting that kind of energy move you or like you said maybe it's going for a run and, and putting on some headphones and listening to something that'll just allow you to not think about the pain that you're going through easily. so that distraction and removal of yourself even for a short time I think is also very helpful and I found a lot that helped, you know, cope with Prince and mm -hmm. losing Prince was the idea of that we're about to have a baby in that moment. And so, like, yeah. that was, in a way, distraction from the grief for Motiv us. Or a motivation. A motivation, like, like, yeah. Kind of like what mm -hmm. we were saying, like, when the cravings hit and it's just because you want to be fit, mm -hmm. it's one thing to be, your, well, your motivation is, I want to eat healthier, I just want to be fit. But when the cravings hit and you knew Xavier knew it was coming, you have a greater motivation. So finding your greatest motivation can really, that helps, right? And mm -hmm. when when Prince was suffering and going, yeah. focusing, I remember so many times we had to focus on on your tummy. Mm -hmm. Like just to. Or when I would be crying and you'd be like, think of the baby, stop crying. Because we know that like my emotional stress was affecting the baby inside. Mm -hmm. And so. I can't even believe in like his, I don't know, seventh month. Like he went through like, a very, he went through it with us. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But all our hearts go out to those of you in here, Kaylee's mom and mm -hmm. um, Hannah as well. And a few of you guys that are, are mentioning what you're going through. This has been a terrible year and we have to do our best to come together and to find strength inside and to be able to, to persevere. A Jordan Peterson thing that he says that I always sticks out to me in a weird way is like a great goal sometimes is just to imagine that when, suffering is to, going to happen when you're going to be at someone's funeral or whatever it is a great goal to try to really cope with the reality of life is to just be like i will i promise myself i'm going to be the strongest person in the room so all the other people around me you can be the support for those people exactly around you. yeah and he's like that's the most that's the most beautiful thing that you could mm -hmm. strive to be mm -hmm. is like for your family and for those around you and to be that strong rock right yeah and i think about that often and i'm like i don't know if i I'm, i don't know if that's possible for me but I I like to think and use that as a goal for because it's going to happen to all of us. All of us, yeah. I mean, that's life. Okay, this is yeah. too depressing. Let's go back to beginning again. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh my goodness. Um, I see you're reading, so yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for you to like bring a question from somebody. Unfortunately, I can't see the laptop, you guys. So Mark Mark's got it all on his laptop. Stella asked saying that Stella Loy, Mark, you once told us that surfing helped you reconnect with yourself. Is running helping the same way or different? And I think you can answer this too, because it's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yoga, running. Um, it's that alone time with yourself. Yeah. I think that's what's really helping. Is, Sur mm -hmm. Surfing's great because of the nature aspect. Yeah. And it's like, you're always having to be, like you have to respond to something. And that's, you're so in the moment. Yeah, right? So like you can't moment. be like thinking about what happened two hours ago because you're surfing waves and you're about to get crushed by a wave if you're not paying attention, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like doing something that forces you to be very in the moment. Like running. Like running. Remember your moment the other day? Oh yeah, I bailed. Like so <laughs> She came on and she was covered in blood. <laughs> because for a moment <laughs> I was my mind wander off somewhere else and I'm just running very mechanical. And here in Osara, like with the with the heat and the dirt roads when there's no rain, a lot more rocks. It's just like it's a it's a terrain, you know, and I just wasn't looking where I was going, I guess. I don't know what happened because I was just in my own bubble. And then the next thing I knew I was on the ground and I did one of those like little kid falls, you know, when you fall <laughs> and then you like skid across <laughs> and then you That's get like so a funny. whole like skid mark, like from your, like you had a lot of skid marks. That yeah. Day. And it was in blood. And, and then, and then you get up and you're like, Oh God, you feel embarrassed. Oh, that's the worst thing when you fall in public, like you actually hurt yourself, but you get up and pretend for some reason. You want people to like come up to you and be like, are you okay? So I remember getting up and like looking around and like, I don't know if anyone saw me and I just like kept running, but I was like, <laughs> bleeding and i ran to the beach and i went into the ocean and like i washed myself oh. with salt water and then i realized how terribly caught up i was and like i'm going back home to actually properly disinfect my wounds but yes 
And that happened because I was running and, and I was not present in that moment. And that, that, that was like a universe teaching me like, boom, be present. Watch where your foot goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Otherwise you <laughs> trip over a rock and skid down a dirt road of Nasara. Right. So yeah, presence is definitely a very important aspect. And I think that's what yoga is so beautiful um, to heal because it allows you to also have to be present in that moment, focusing on your breath, focusing on your movement on your positioning on your alignment, all of those things allow your mind to stay focused and in that flow state. Otherwise it goes somewhere else. And yoga is the door we all need to walk through. Yeah. It's, Mm -hmm. I wish, and I, this is good timing because I Konya Bajovic said, Mark, please tell my husband that yoga can help him with his back pain. He's listening. If you are listening, Mm -hmm. it can help you with your back pain and so much more. You'll start because of your back pain and you have no idea where it will lead you. Oh my gosh. And Mark, like you can speak to it. I mean, 100%. Before we left Toronto, before we sold everything, your herniations are probably the worst. Like I've never seen anyone go through what you did. Like Mark was in so much pain. He couldn't sit. Oh, yeah. He couldn't even pee. Like, he'd go and pee, and it would be, like, so painful. It's terrible. He lived on the floor um, for, like, three or four months waiting to get, I don't know, see a specialist. I remember. The like, great Canadian health system. Yeah. It's, and I say awesome. that with as much sarcasm as I possibly um, can. Forced him to be on the floor, like, on pain medications, because that was the Well, no, they wouldn't give me pain medications until I got an MRI, but I couldn't get an MRI because the health system so backed up it was going to take four months. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's, yeah. We have not a lot of great things to say. About no. That. But yeah, no. And and visualization was a key. And mm-hmm. and once we finally got to the point where I could move again, rehabilitating through yoga. Yes. Um, it's funny too, because before my back went, um, I used yoga so, so deeply to recover from my knee. And then I, again, like we're talking about beginning again, I fell away from yoga. I got too busy. Bow Beautiful was too much. My morning routine fell to pieces. And then I got this terrible back injury, and which was, I think, the universe saying, no, go back to yoga. You have so mm-hmm. much more work to do. Yeah. Um, but speaking of things you can do, um, if you're listening right now, I'm sorry, who was, who was asked the question? Her name is I- Iconia. Iconia. Um, we did actually shoot this yoga video in Hawaii, mm-hmm. and it was for sciatica pain and back pain. And a lot of the movements that I did in that class was actually what, uh, the physiotherapist was giving Mark. Yeah, we designed that one. That yeah, to like strictly recover. Strictly based on my recovery. Exactly. And so I think if anyone's going through a lot of back pain, maybe herniations, any sort of recovery like that, those movements and exercises are really amazing to do. So you can find it. It's in Hawaii. It's above it's, a boot, but in front of a Buddha statue. I think mm-hmm. you're wearing a black onesie. No, that was a different one. But in the same location. In the same location. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it's called like yoga for back pain and sciatic pain. And there's another one that we shot in uh, Greece as well, yoga for back pain. So there's a couple of videos that we have on YouTube, but also obviously on the app, you guys can find it. And it's probably a lot easier for you to find it on the app because you can search it by country. Mm-hmm. So if you just filter one from Hawaii. US. Uh, oh, US. US yeah, and Hawaii, then, like and it's then, a country. And then Greece as well. You'll be able to find uh, the back pain one. But highly recommend you incorporate that into your life and just start little by little you know just do a couple exercises like go slow go easy love you know self-care self-care love all of those components have to be part of your we, recovery we put out a back video calendar like two weeks ago too yeah, that's the too. timing of this is great so call in now i know your name if you're listening mm. try that back calendar video mm-hmm. just do it for a week see what happens i mean the thing with yoga is it's going to be really uncomfortable and feel very unnatural and your first few classes are going to be almost can be really frustrating to somebody mm-hmm. who's really entering it especially if you're entering from an ailment not just to experiment with yoga but i find that um if, if you stick to it and commit to i would say i think it's a seven day calendar but i would guess or i would suggest it for your back to go seven or 14 or 21 days to 14 or 21 mm-hmm. and then make that commitment with your with your partner do it every day together it will bring you guys closer together we used to do yoga i mean this is the first time we don't do yoga together now mm-hmm. like it was it became a thing that brought us like gave us a special time mm-hmm. and you know I exactly don't know. no but do that every day and just see like just that movement and, and 
bringing more blood flow into the spine, into the back should really help just stimulate the healing process mm-hmm. of whatever your body's going through. And the classes aren't long, you know, you're not being asked to commit an hour of your day to it. They're like 10, 15 minute classes. So really some in the calendar are a little longer. I remember we chose some like twenties and thirties, maybe but really like at the end of the day, you know, do what you can. Yeah. Do what you can. You know, if you need to stop the video halfway stop. through, do it. I For mean, sure. the most important thing is that you make that commitment. You get on the mat. That's the most important thing. And whatever you can do is up to that day. And forgive yourself for it and then just get back on it again and again and again and it'll get easier and easier each time. That's Mm -hmm. so well said. A few more questions. Uh, Lindsay Morton, I've seen you ask this question a few times. I apologize. But sometimes when Julianne is talking, I don't want to interrupt her. Mark and Julianne, I've been practicing for 13 months. and I'm still struggling to go beyond my beginner level. Any suggestions how to move through the burn? Hmm. Unfortunately, just keep doing it. <laughs> I, I mean, there's it, no hacks or, or easy tricks to get through it. I, I, think I have a really good piece of advice for that. Yeah, well, I was for, just going to say your body will adjust with time and your body will take time to get used to that type of movement. Mm-hmm. You know? mm. And I found, I think my level has increased in the last three or four months for the first time in five years. Mm-hmm. And it's because I focused on the positions and the asanas that I avoided the most. Yeah. Because naturally, when I was when I practice, we don't really use other classes. We mm-hmm. we do our own thing. And naturally I found that there were certain things and certain poses that I was like, oh, I just don't want to do that. It didn't like so I was avoiding them. And it's probably what your body needed most. And it's what my body yeah. needed most. That which we yeah. avoid is sometimes that which we need yeah. the most. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. No, exactly. So challenging yourself but also practicing with awareness and realizing, oh, well, I really hate, let's say, backbends. I really just don't like doing backbends. Well, maybe that's what your body needs. And so starting slow and easy and just going that beginner level first and finding, again, that patience for your practice. And wherever you are, mm-hmm. whatever, like the idea of beginner as a qualification, when you could literally be doing it for two years and be still looking at the title that we have to do because on YouTube beginner is something someone searches for. Mm -hmm. It's just gentle or easier or more compassionate or just for the body that, that that's the level their body responds to best. So also recognizing that progress as much as sometimes I talk about it, it's not necessarily an accurate description of what yoga actually Mm -hmm. is. Right? No, exactly. Yoga is what you need in the moment. Exactly. Do you think? It is. I mean, you like we always like to say that quote, you are exactly where you need to be. It's not about, you know, getting to that position or mastering that asana. Sure, it's wonderful when you do and you feel like you've accomplished something. But really, the work happens when you get on your mat. And whether you touch your toes or whether you're able to just touch your knees, the most important thing is that you're making the effort. And so the your body is getting the benefit it needs from you taking that effort. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think it's important to remember that because obviously it's hard, especially nowadays, you know, you look at social media and oh. and everyone does these crazy, like, it's almost like acrobatics, you know, like all these crazy yoga postures and it's great to want to accomplish that. Sure. But it's not necessary for you to be a yogi and a yoga pratic- uh, practitioner. It just requires you to have that daily commitment to your own self-care right. and that's getting on your mat and whether you can touch your toes or not it doesn't matter because in that moment when you're practicing yoga you're breathing you're present you're stimulating detoxifying your body like there's so much purification mental and physical that happens when you're practicing yoga that that's that's the benefit right there it mm-hmm. doesn't matter if you're able to do the splits or not like that's not the point of yoga and i think we always have to remember that well we're um, culture based on like goal oriented mm-hmm. competitiveness exactly like, and yeah. so it becomes about comparison and it becomes about progress it becomes about all of the things that yoga is actually not even about i mean yoga is not even about asanas and practicing on a mat that's just preparation for stillness and meditation mm-hmm. like the actual idea traditionally of what yoga is has very little like one eighth of it mm-hmm. is getting on your mat to do asanas yeah, exactly and we've taken it and turned it into this really bastardized idea it's the one limb of the eight limbs right? Of yoga, right which is always interesting yeah. whenever we come back to that like i always have to recheck myself mm-hmm. because you get so caught up 
from a lifetime of conditioning about being like, no, I have to be able to do the the flying pigeon. pigeon. Is that the one that I've been working on? I don't even know what yeah. it's called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that, you know, three times a week, 10 seconds a side, three times per side. And it becomes about hitting a goal rather than just knowing that the process of going through that and losing myself in it, that's what it's truly all about, bringing more presence into, mm -hmm. into that process. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Yoga's so screwed up like these days do you know what i mean like it's just so screwed up we were I, we went out for dinner with this woman a, a mother of a, to a couple friend of ours and she she was in town and we all went out for dinner and she's lived in um ojai for like 35 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. when they were back in ojai in california there was one yoga street it's very spiritual like grassrootsy kind of hippie kind of community and so and she was talking about like how she screwed up her body from yoga because it became such a competitive thing to her oh my gosh you know even funny i remember when i was an athlete back before i was a yogi that's kind of what i got into yoga from and I remember that was my very first time ever trying yoga. I was 16 years old and someone told me to go to a Bikram yoga class. And I did. And, you know, it's like if th those of you guys that don't know Bikram yoga, it's like 90 minutes in a hot room. And it's always the same like military type of postures, no matter what, how many times you do, you do the same postures every time. And they're very like. Was Bikram the one with not, the creepy pervert guy? Yeah. <laughs> it is. But there's very, a crazy documentary on netflix yeah, about it if you look and it it's up. and it's the teachers are very militant and i remember somebody was like we were doing an asana where like you extended your leg and i was and i already like being a gymnast at that time had issues with my knees and i had like someone yelling at me like straighten your knee straighten your knee straighten your knee and it was so unloving and uncompassionate and i actually ended up injuring myself in my right. very first yoga class <laughs> because i was being yelled at and i was like in the heat so obviously like with the heat your body's able to stretch more but then you're also stretching the ligaments and so i think i overstretched a ligament i was like limping for like 4 days or something after my first yoga class and i actually at that moment i was like i don't like yoga like i was like i hate yoga this is terrible right. because that was <laughs> oh my, my very first experience like later a few years after i got introduced to in different styles of yoga which obviously then took me on this path um that conclude like that ha that was all about love and compassion for yourself and that's what i connected with but not that style of yoga but that's it's so funny. interesting yeah like you know it's um and and i think the reason why they're so militant and and non-compassionate and not style and, and maybe it works for some people i'm for not sure. trying to diss bikram's yoga some people really enjoy it but it it forces you to like be competitive and they have a mirror and everyone's practicing in front of a mirror and you're looking at everyone around you and it's like there's this competitiveness to it and mm -hmm. you feel inadequate if you can't go beyond what your neighbor next to you on the mat can and that's a terrible feeling and i don't believe that's what yoga is about because that's, that's you're not connecting to your inner self you're just hoping you can do it better than that person next to you that's what i felt like my yoga teacher training was like yeah. Like, I really felt like it was just a room full of people, like, watching each other and, like, trying to outdo each other and being, like, it was just, like, mirror, like, it was, like, everyone was a mirror and mm -hmm. no one felt good about their practice. Well, I, I can't say no one, but I, I, from talking to a few people in it, it was just, like, it turned into this weird competitive thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think it's, it, ex, it, ex, it extrapolates to all kinds, like, and the internet has sort of reinforced that and it's, yeah. it's really sad in a way. But yeah. at the same time, that's why I don't go to yoga classes anymore because I don't like that kind of energy and I don't like when it stirs in me like you, mm -hmm. it's so uncontrollable you're in a yoga class you see someone doing something and you have to think about how you do it towards that but rather my practice be about me and where right. I am and not where I feel like I should be and the mm -hmm. ego and the comparison and all that gets it's such like a dangerous thing yeah it's a it's a slippery slope and it's a slippery <laughs> slope right yeah um a lot of questions about retreats retreats just are we going to be doing any in costa rica or anywhere because lots of people would love to support that yeah would i mean we don't have any plans right now no. there's many retreats going on no but for us no not at the moment at no the honestly moment. with the baby and we're really focused on creating lots of content for you guys mm -hmm. and you know shooting a, we want to shoot a postnatal program as well we have a, a prenatal program that's in the works right now that we shot throughout my pregnancy but now we want to do a postnatal and so there's a lot of new projects on the go um that i don't think retreat is in the books yet but one day for sure we one always day. say it and like when it. we decide to do a retreat we want to do it 
really well. We don't want to just like, oh, let's bring out 30 people and do some yoga together. It's like we want to incorporate different healers and to really give that incredible right. experience to those people that come and enjoy a physical uh, retreat together. A transformational mm -hmm. event. Yeah. But I guess retreat's good. Like for for everything. Like mm -hmm. it, big plans for that in the dream board of for sure one day a hundred percent it's just we have to be very mindful with our timing and you know we're constantly trying to find that balance between our business and everything boho beautiful related but also our family and we have a little baby that needs a lot of attention now mm -hmm. so you know it's finding that balance is important jacqueline hansel's suggesting we try a virtual live meditation sometime that's a really cool idea mm -hmm. great great idea jacqueline that would um, be really cool actually we should and we'll do it on the app. Oh, and then Alicia, Tarita also asked the same thing. That's really cool. Maybe we'll do it on the app, eh? Mm -hmm. Just like this. Is that what you just said? Because yeah. I was reading. Oh my no, God. exactly. Yeah. That would be that would be really fun. That would, that would be, be really cool. cool. If you guys want that, for sure. We can arrange it. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And someone said, have you considered doing a loving kindness meditation? I Which, think we have one. Do we? Yeah. Is it part of the meditation program? <laughs> yeah. And like the, the 14 days of meditation and yoga that we launched in January, I think there was one, because I remember like in, having that intention in one of the days right. no, about I think loving right. kindness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's called loving kindness, but it might be actually. No, I think it is. Yeah. It, or at least the sentiment for that day was. Yeah, exactly. A um, couple more things and then we got to run. Um, I'm really proud that the backup link worked out and that yes. we're still live. No, we're Knock still on wood. <laughs> because... The jungle is a crazy place. <laughs> yeah. Sarah Blue has asked a few times um, for you to talk about your path from gymnastics to yoga. That's a don't. I, it's I, a I long. Need, that's like, a podcast on that. its own. Yeah. <laughs> Give the um, Coles notes though. The very short form of that. Um, I was a gymnast from pretty much the age of seven. Though my parents put me in gymnastics in Ukraine, and then once I moved to Canada, I was a professional gymnast. Uh, I represented Canada worldwide for many years until I was about 16. And then I got um, started to get a really terrible back injury just from over usage. And by the time I was 17, it was terrible. Like there were moments I was in at a hospital. But you were on the like you were on Team Canada at that point, right? Yeah, I was. I was a Canadian champion twice two years in mm -hmm. a row and then because of that you know they were sending me to all these like competitions all over the world to represent kind of like Pan Am Games uh, World Championships and it was very demanding like I trained I went to a special school where I only went to school till 11 in the morning I was like a, a an athlete's program and then from two no from 12 30 until about 7 p.m I would be in the gym practicing and that was my childhood till right. I was 17. But I think what's interesting mm -hmm. that you leave out is as the injuries started to appear, because you guys were immigrants to Canada, mm -hmm. it was you that was, um, it was your gymnastics career through the Canadian government, which that's something to be very grateful for that kept oh, your yeah. family going. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, cause they had this thing in Canada called you're a carded athlete, meaning that you're on the team, especially if you're a national champion um you have these assignments a year that you have to travel to and represent the country in different world competitions and for that they were giving me like a salary so i was like a 14 year old girl i think at that time making like three thousand dollars a month and because of the salary and my parents you know my parents immigrated my mom was a dishwasher my dad was delivering pizza but he was a doctor where he came from yeah, which is but, super interesting but he came to canada and they don't recognize any of his certifications he had to deliver pizzas for many years and so i was supporting my family at the same time so when the injuries started to happen i wanted i was done i don't i like i, I started to also lose the love for the sport as well it was just a very very difficult time for me I went into a bit of a depression like there's a lot of mental health as well i was um suffering through and I couldn't quit because I was on this contract and I was supporting my family. My family really needed the money at that time. So it was a lot of sacrifice that I had to learn about and, and th go through. Do you think that's where you learned about listening to your body? Because that's mm -hmm. one of your, you, your main, like mm -hmm. you didn't because something else, which was your family felt more important. I pushed through the pain and I, and I um, covered it up with pharmaceutical drugs, pain medications to get me through the terrible pain I was having in my back. Um, at a point I was like taking like bits of morphine. It was that bad. Like just so I could do a competition. Because it's so it was, crazy that people would like doctors could justify a yeah. competition 
But because that. to them, like they needed me to represent the country, and so I was needed. Like, That's an interesting word you use. Yeah, well, wanted. Exactly. And so by the time I was seventeen, I had like five hairline fractures in my spine, and finally, due to the severity of it, I was able to get enough notes from the doctors for to the Canadian Gymnastics Federation saying like she needs to stop. That like, they that they let you yeah like you need to let her retire because they wouldn't let you right mm -hmm. that's pretty messed up yeah. too well they were very uh hesitant about it and you know for many reasons because you're bringing home the medals um yeah and so around that time i finally retired and then i had to find a way to heal my body and not just my back my knees like my hips like i had a lot of issues physically and that's when i turned to to dance and to yoga like dance mm -hmm. like ballet dancing um the alignment component that was something that really helped me but also yoga and that was and pilates actually yoga and pilates were the two things that really helped me recover and heal my back um and then because from my experience then then the love grew stronger for yoga and then i did my first teacher training here in costa rica in 2003 and oh sorry 2013 i was like what <laughs> i was like i wasn't 13 um and that was a whole different the beginning of everything beginning of us. everything it was a big spiritual journey for me to do that training it was more more than training it was a reawakening of my own inner self and that was yeah that's where i went from but but i'm very grateful you know i speak about it as if it was a terrible thing me being an athlete most of my life taught me so much. It taught me discipline. It taught me sacrifice and commitment. To this and commitment. And I truly owe everything to it because I think from what I had to go through and the challenges, the hurdles I had to get through as a child and a teenager has leaped me forward in being what I am today and the life I've created for myself. And I think that everything that we have, mm -hmm. we owe to discipline. What yeah, it, well, same it? with you. You were a hockey player, so. But dis yeah. what, did, what was it again? The three things: discipline, discipline commitment, sacrifice, and sacrifice. And, commitment. Yeah. and those are the those mm -hmm. I think would be the three driving pillars mm -hmm. of Bo Beautiful and the life that we have. Yeah, I mean, it's and you're for, right for anything that we want to accomplish. Because I learned that through hockey. Exactly, yeah. you learned that through. Like, but it was like being so committed to something at such a young age. Yeah. What's yeah. Xavier going to do? Be a surfer. We're gonna get him on. Is there the discipline, board. sacrifice? And, yeah. Yeah. Sacrifice? Yes, if you Beautiful. wanna <laughs> be a professional a, a athlete, a surfer, right? You know, like I'm that just, is a lot of sacrifice. That's so cool. For sure. So yeah. um all right. Well, a couple last things just to fire off Grincy Kants. We will not be having necklaces back on our site. Maybe one day, but not in the in the near future. It was um, too challenging to upkeep that it was too much mm -hmm. um what else do we have here i think that's pretty much it's a lot of long questions thank you guys by the way for my god for all of your support and love and all these questions you're firing off to us it's wonderful and thank you guys for being here yes and thank you guys for um, enjoying our being a part of community yeah yeah it's very special to Not, have what we have here honestly mm -hmm. we we've tried and we're going to continue um especially now with the production coming up, but we're trying so hard to live up to the commitment of having this app and having so many of you people so engaged mm -hmm. in, in what we create. Yeah. So not a day goes by. I don't think we're, we're on our gratitude yeah. list. Mm -hmm. It's that you guys are here with us. Yeah. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And thank you for being here. <laughs> this is cool. This was actually, I like this so much better than doing it live on YouTube. Why? Well, I'm not watching. Well, you, you get to be a little more intimate with yeah. people because it's less people than like when you exactly the just, little yeah. bar on the right isn't going crazy and yeah. and I'm you know I'm recognizing people's names like coming back through and, and I don't know yeah. and we're able to like I don't know, interact with those who support us exactly the most yeah so thank you guys and. Uh, I'm just, if we're going through that whole wheel of gratitude to close off the YouTube, the YouTube, the podcast. Um, thank you to Fab. Thank for, you to Fab. For being here. Shout out to. To the Mr. Loveburger. 
I feel like um, we met so many people here at Loveburg every time we eat. They're like, oh, we came here because we saw you guys were here. <laughs> so keep coming. We're like a billboard for Fab. Keep coming. <laughs> yeah. When you come to Giona's or Nassara. Come to Loveburger because it's the best vegan food you'll find. Yeah, And if you can't come here, just go find the best vegan food in your town. Mm-hmm. Right? Because there's good vegan food everywhere. So thank you, Thab. And thank you guys for being here. What mm-hmm. else are we thankful for? Thank you to our moms if they're listening. Because right they now. have Xavier right now. Because they have Xavier right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Victoria. Yeah. Thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> for playing with him. He's getting so cute now, you guys. Just for those of you oh, that care. Yeah. He's, for those of you that care. <laughs> well, I don't know how everyone cares about our baby, but no, I know, for those people that funny. do, every week he's just growing and growing and growing and he's like making little noises now and he's slowly being able to grab things and he's, he's so aware of like colors. He sees everything now. Yeah, like the sees jungle, the palm trees. We take him to watch the sunset as, as often as we can and it's amazing just to see oh. human being and someone alive. I kept seeing the birth video question coming up and I think this month, now that we'll have more people to help with production, we should mm-hmm. be able to get to the birth video. Yes, to talk about the home birth and, and everything we went through. <laughs> and Alexander Pep goes, we do care. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys. What a, and, then, and then Linda goes, we all care. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And that's so cool. Yeah, no, he's honestly. He's our little angel. For and, sure. and then Alexander Pep asked if we can see him soon. The answer is for sure. Yeah. We just been... We've Life's been, been it's been crazy, but we've also been very mindful about not putting him too much in front of the camera or like on Instagram. Like we do a photo here and there, but I don't know. It's like a fine line. We just don't want him to be thrown into our whole social media business. This is first months of life, you know. Yeah. As he grows older, then yeah, he'll be more integrated. But right now we're just letting him be his little baby, you know, mm-hmm. have his privacy and his space. I think that's important to us too. Right. He's so precious. Anyways. Okay. Guys, that, thank you. With thank that, you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your love, your support. Um, and we'll see you again soon. Well, I'm sure we'll do this very soon. Yeah. Let us know, guys, in the comments and stuff mm-hmm. if you enjoyed this and those of you on official, let us know when we post it there if you want us to keep doing it this way because this has been really, um, yeah. this has been really special. Yeah, lots of love. Awesome, guys. See Ciao. you soon. Mm-hmm.